Okay. <laughs> so, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. Just a few words to say that we are very glad to have you here. We are just a few. But I suppose you are going to thinking about your summer time and summer schools. Bicocca summer schools is a very good occasion to go abroad. So let's introduce the first summer school. He is uh, from uh, Professoressa Sekulic. <laughs> Please. Uh, so hello to everybody. My name is Tatiana Sekulic, uh, uh, and I teach sociology at the Department of Sociology and Social Research. Uh, here is our director, uh, Professor Giampaolo Nuvolati. And uh, I would like to tell you a few words about uh, uh, our summer school, um, Rethinking the Culture of Tolerance. Uh, this uh, year, uh, we, organize, uh, we, we have been organizing the fifth edition of this school. Uh, the topic of the school, Rethinking the Culture of Tolerance, is a general framework of uh, our uh, common project. But uh, every year, the school has a specific uh, topic and specific arguments uh, that, uh, will, uh, that are never the same as uh, uh, in the years before. Um, uh, the school is a joint program uh, between three universities, University of Milano Bicocca and two universities of Bosnia and Herzegovina, University of Sarajevo and University of East Sarajevo. Uh, this year, uh, other universities uh, will join uh, the organization of the school uh, for uh, 2018 edition. It will be also the University of Milan, Department of Political and Social Sciences, and uh, other two universities of Bosnia, two universities of Mostar, uh, which is also kind of a divided city. So University of Mostar and University of Mostar Jamal Biric, it seems for those who uh, do not uh, know nothing about the Bosnian war, Yugoslav wars, and uh, the situation nowadays in the country. Uh, but these two universities uh, are uh, universities of divided city. We can, we can, uh, um, we can uh, describe them uh, in this way. So um, working on the culture of tolerance and working on uh, the topics as the specific topic of this year, school, which is groups, conflicts, and reconciliation, uh, has this uh, um, meta-target, you can meta-objective uh, to uh, put together people, not only in Italia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also in the region of, uh, uh, so to say, Western Balkans uh, and other European uh, countries, to think together about uh, uh, so difficult um, uh, arguments uh, regarding the conflict prevention and resolution, which is uh, uh, really one of the main um, uh, difficulties and challenges of uh, our time. Uh, the school is oriented particularly to the students of uh, uh, master and the doctoral level. We, of course, accept, uh, accept also students uh, from the uh, bachelor degree, but uh, the last year, third year, for example, of a bachelor degree. Uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, for example, uh, they uh, have a four plus one uh, cycles of study. So uh, you are invited to uh, uh, send your applications, uh, and then uh, uh, our scientific committee will uh, select the candidates. Um, well, uh, you can also read uh, something, uh, some information uh, on the on the uh, on the billboard. Uh, but I would like also to, to tell uh, other things that are not presented in our presentation uh, regarding uh, the specific topic of this uh, year uh, edition of the school. Um, the school um, will uh, um, be organized in September from 70 to 23 September. And uh, we usually organize our lessons and seminars in a very intensive common work uh, very dialogical, uh, encouraging the students to participate uh, actively to uh, the program. And there is just a few moments of free time. I have to say that this is the main, uh, 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 the main, uh, how to say, negative thing about our school. But uh, I uh, uh, will be also able to show you uh, evaluation of our students in fourth. 
um, uh, editions uh, from 2004, uh, 50, uh, 2014 to uh, the edition of 2017, uh, and they are really very, very positive. This year we shall work uh, on several arguments, and, and I will try to read very quickly uh, a few of them. Uh, we shall work on post-national Europe and the ethno-nationalization of collective identities. We shall work on the question of intolerance, discrimination and extermination versus peace and reconciliation in the frame of Europe's unification based also on the traditions of the, the Ventotene Manifesto published in 41 and 44. Beyond identity, nationalism, transnationalism and cosmopolitanism after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Then uh, on this difficult issue of coming to terms with the totalitarian past of Nazism, Fascism and Stalinism and of counter narratives and the reinvention of the past uh, we are witnessing uh, also in these uh, years, on, in these days. We shall work also on bordering, ordering, othering, reloaded in 21st century Europe, on the perils of political and cultural radicalization today, queen, uh, then, uh, so, so to say, na on nationalism, populism, and anti-politics, widespread in many of the European countries, in West and in East, on political, social, juridical, and psychological consequences of past and recent conflicts, on the experience of the Yugoslav wars in the light of the EU integration process, and you know that the Western Balkans are the next one to enter uh, the uh, European uh, membership. But we shall also open the dialogue about the Middle East and lessons to be learned for conflict and pre prevention and resolution. Uh, last year, the topic of our school uh, was related to the migration, forced migration question. So we worked on borders, um, uh, migration, and forced migration. So we shall uh, take uh, partially uh, the, um, uh, the topics that we uh, worked on last year. So we shall work on internally displaced persons, refugees, asylum seekers, returnees, uh, talking about the pathways of survival. And then, of course, reconciliation and tolerance, which is our key word, rebuilding destroyed societies, reconnecting the space of everyday life, and on reconstructing trust and solidarity. At the end, resisting radicalization and fundamentalism, the European integration projects, project and the limits of toleration. These topics will, uh, of course, uh, be uh, um, uh, put in detail in our uh, daily agenda in the next months, and uh, we really invite uh, uh, not only persons that are uh, uh, present here uh, to, to um, uh, listen to our presentations and to, to see our offer of the summer schools, but also to talk to your uh, mates uh, and to spread the um, information about uh, this particular school and also uh, about other schools that will be presented uh, today. Uh, as, uh, as much as possible. Uh, this year, as I said, the school will uh, happen in Milan. Uh, it's the second time, it was also in 2015, uh, in Milan Bicocca. One day will be organized at the University of Milan. Uh, we shall uh, try to organize also some walks in the city to visit some specific, specifically important uh, places uh, uh, related to the memory of the Second World War and the reconciliation that uh, means not only uh, Yugoslav wars or Balkan wars or uh, wars in Middle East, but also uh, uh, it's the fu fundament on which whole project of European integration was built on. So I think this could be uh, all that uh, I would like to, to tell you in this very moment, but you are also invited to make some questions, of course. <coughs> Thank you. Do you have any question? Okay. Uh, we can invite for the second presentation Paola Branduardi from the Department of Material Science of the University. Biology. Biology. My mistake. Biology. Okay. okay, so hello everybody. Okay, so our, um, well, welcome to this moment uh, and uh, I'm happy that you're here to listen to some of our 
ideas that we want to share with you and a school that we want really to do together with you. Uh, let's say our idea is a little bit more recent, not uh, in our mind, but as uh, organized in a summer school. This will be the second edition of this school and uh, actually derives uh, from our experience in the field in respect to, let's say, the biological part of what I'm saying. The, the main concept here is, uh, let's say, a bio-based economy uh, that is, uh, should be, or at least we would like to promote this change of paradigm and changing from a linearity of our uh, economic, uh, let's say, uh, model to a circular economy. And this is why the idea is to move in the direction of a sustainability. Maybe you know about this term, uh, this is uh, overshoot day. Have you ever heard about that? So the overshoot day is the day of the year in which we, let's say, use up all the things that the earth uh, managed to <laughs> produce in a year. And uh, the last year that this overshoot day, uh, let's say, was at the end of the year was 1972, according to some calculation. I have no idea how they are done. But from that year on, this overshoot day, uh, it's, let's say, um, fall uh, earlier in the year. And in 2017, it was calculated that it was on the 2nd of August. That means that we have, let's say, a problem. But in our mind, a problem is calls for a solution. And so the idea is to sit together to see which solutions we can put uh, in, uh, let's say, in a row. And uh, the idea then is really to imagine how we can a little bit change our mentality and what the society is already doing for changing this mentality. And so to change uh, the, the idea of using and dis dispose or discard, but thinking about a total rethinking of our pro process of production and uh, uh, the idea of uh, recycling and reusing and having products that are mere, more compatible with our world and with the possibility that our world has in terms of resources. So this is why we say that it's your challenge, <laughs> because uh, the point is that we have to come up together. And the idea is that the sustainability has at least three pillars that are the, the society, the economics, and the environment. And this is why the summer school um, is intended to keep together these three pillars. And uh, the idea is really to have, uh, um, let's say, lectures that are intended to be, um, let's say, um, how to say, um, there are experts in the different fields, uh, but the audience is open to people having a background from the scientific part, uh, but also from the economics and also from the environment or social. Because the idea is really to see how we can keep together these three pillars and how can we develop something. Uh, this summer school is run uh, as a co-participation uh, of two universities. So it's our university, Milano Bicocca, but also the Chalmers University in Gothenburg, Sweden, where they have, uh, let's say, a profound experience in the field. For, for sure, Sweden already moved uh, let's say, more towards uh, the circular economy. But Italy is also doing a lot. And you know that we have a really prestigious example as uh, Novamont, if someone heard about Materbi and other products from them. And so the idea is to have different experience, so case study, but also together with lesson, uh, starting from law and economics and uh, planning of Europe for moving in this direction. How is this done? So we stay together one week, and during this week uh, we have lesson, but during this lesson we will also have practical moment uh, in which students will be involved in exercise, uh, and some of these exercises will also have some, uh, um, how to say, um, additional requirements that you can develop uh, uh, during some moments uh, or the evening, nights, I don't know, <laughs> depends up to you. And this also helps in constituting groups of works uh, and keep you together, also thinking about the future connection among you all. And, uh, and then uh, this practical exercise is also made in a way that we can think about the ethical consequences of what we are doing. 
and uh, so different ex experts in the field and uh, and the point is that we can stay together also during lunchtime and so on so you have you, if you have some uh, request or additional uh, ideas that you want to develop is something that we can also obviously consider. Uh, students have the possibility to present themselves uh, during a poster section. And um, uh, what else comes to my mind? Uh, yes, and we are trying to fix now a visit uh, either to a company or to a reality that can, uh, how to say, can be an, uh, an example of this circular economy. And uh, then we will also have, obviously, mo moments where we can really share uh, ideas. At the end of the week, uh, uh, students will be called to give a presentation of something that they have developed during the, the, the week. And this can also be a moment for being evaluated for the capability of putting together ideas. And the school can provide you with six uh, credits uh, that, for some of you, obviously, can be more relevant and for some the certificate it's already anyhow a good a good thing to bring home and uh, well you will see it will be here uh, in Bicocca uh, with the visit that we are exactly as I said still planning and uh, so um, no worries if your background is different because uh, uh, differences and diversity is our richness so the lessons and the groups will be done in a way that uh, independently from the background, you will be bring together because this is exactly circular economy. We have to stay together. And the dates of our school are from the 3rd to the 7th of September this year. And uh, weather in Milano will be lovely, I hope. <laughs> and uh, we will be happy to welcome you all. And if you have a question now, I'm here to answer. If not, thanks. We can have also, if you want to have questions, for if you have questions, you can uh, please just. I have to pass you the microphone, otherwise they don't hear it through the streaming. Uh, I'm I'm on my second year here in Bicocca, so I just wonder if I can apply for this kind of projects, or mm, it's just for older students. Okay, shall I start? Then maybe we pass the microphone to my to the previous speaker. Yeah. Um, um, according to our past experience, uh, students from the third year, or let's say bachelor. Uh, we're really uh, following the lessons and all the program with really enthusiasm and uh, with not particular problem except that obviously maybe uh, you realize that you have to study more about specific subjects but uh, it's intended for sure for master even PhD students uh, but we will not exclude uh, a priori um, some candidates that can derive from the bachelor. Um, we, you have, let's say, to apply and to send a motivation letter and with the application, your background. And this is, for us, it's important, especially for organizing the lessons and for dividing groups in a way that you can group with people that can help and you can help the other in some issues. Okay. Now, as uh, for the third program, uh, I can uh, invite uh, Professoressa Mugnano and or Professor Nuvolati. I don't know who wants to give the presentation. Um, is the fourth edition of this summer school program on attractive cities, which we jointly with the University of Barcelona, please. Hi. <coughs> And Paolo will introduce and... Uh, good afternoon, my name is Gianpaolo Nuolati. I am the director of the Department of Sociology and Social Research and I am also the coordinator of this summer school. Um, as already has been told, this is the first edition of a summer school concerning urban attractiveness. The first edition was in Milan. It was in the period of the Expo, 
and it was just in Milan one week. Then we have other two edition. The second was uh, one week in Milano and one week in Barcelona. That's because we think that it's very important to compare living conditions, urban activities, comparing two different countries. And in this case, it's very interesting to compare Milano with Barcelona because there are cities that are quite similar. And also the third edition, the last one, was the half of, of it, uh, one week in Milano and another week in Barcelona. And we think that also the next edition we will work together with the University of Barcelona. Just two words about the importance of urban attractiveness in our society. We have a quite a strong tradition in our department concerning the uh, urban studies and in particular concerning urban issues. We have a PhD program named Urbeu that is just focused on these topics. And uh, we have a different kind of researches on uh, concerning uh, city and uh, in particular concerning urban marketing. Urban marketing means are city able to attract population, are able to attract firms, companies and so on. But what are the contradictions linked to these processes? I leave the floor now to my colleague, Professoressa Mugnano, Silvia Mugnano. She is the, let's say, uh, since the beginning, she is doing a lot concerning the development of this network, also with Barcelona, and she will give uh, you a general frame of the summer school. Thank you, Silvia. Hi, um, I will pass to the structure of the summer school. It's divided in, let's say, three main dimensions. The, uh, the next one, please. So we will provide some theoretical, methodological um, tools to, um, to study how city can uh, become more attractive. Then uh, what we do is um, offering um, some case studies, so um, police, uh, policy makers or activists from the two different cities will come and tell you what they do and what kind of innovative um, um, projects are uh, implementing at the, the local level. And then uh, what is happening every afternoon, this is going to, what I told you, it's in the morning and in the afternoon what we do, <laughs> there are site <laughs> visits so with uh, uh, the tutor from uh, um, from the local context, uh, you go with also the um, teacher uh, to visit some experience, and um, and so you will see how uh, the organization and uh, how things are working. So just to tell you some examples, the, in the previous um, edition, for example, we give a presentation on attractiveness and mobility and in the afternoon the students uh, usually have a meeting with the local agency on, of, of the municipality of Milan on mobility. So you, the, the students get provided by the uh, car sh uh, bicycle sharing uh, for free for afternoon and they go around and they see how the mobility works. So um, how the uh, car sharing works in Milan and what are the difference between Milan and Barcelona. Um, so um, let's go to the, the topics. So what I say, uh, well, the, the um, the school is, uh, is touching different topics. Um, one is, as I told you, mobility. The other, uh, another topic is about the population that live and get attracted by the cities. So we are used to think just about tourists. But actually what happens is that cities are more and more and more attracting uh, other kind of population, residents uh, or uh, people that are using uh, the city for a short time, what we call city users. So um, all these kind of population have different needs. 
and uh, uh, different expectations. So if a city wants to be welcoming and attractive, then it has to uh, kind of respond to this different population. So uh, this will be one of the uh, aspects that uh, will be touched in, uh, in uh, explore in the summer school. Then another aspect is about uh, public policies and private policies. So what kind of policies are being implemented uh, and are in the process of being implemented in the different contexts. And, um, and uh, uh, a new topic that we will work on this year is about night economy. Uh, old cities are more and more becoming uh, a pole of attraction related to night economy. So what, and this is becoming one of the main topic for uh, the, the city to, for the GDP of the city. I mean, uh, the economy runs again, uh, around this, what is happening in the night. So uh, it's not just theater, but it's also um, other aspect, uh, let's say, related to the entertainment economy. Where is happening? Uh, well, uh, as uh, Professor Nuvolati told you already, uh, we, we work uh, on pair with another university, that <coughs> it's the University of Barcelona. And uh, I think this combo uh, works quite well, actually, because all the students uh, um, are working one week in Milan and the second week in Barcelona. And uh, in Milan, they have teachers from Milan um, and uh, from other con Italian contexts. And then they move to Barcelona, and they have uh, other teachers from uh, Spain. Um, <clears throat> and what we do is trying to uh, provide in these two weeks uh, in a general overview of all the different aspects of the urban attractiveness. Um, when, well, first of who? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> who? Uh, well, uh, um, to reply to the, uh, the, the student that was asking before, well, the this, this summer school is open to different discipline and to also different level or, and degrees. We prefer uh, master's level and uh, bachelor's at the end of the career. But uh, as my colleague has say, said, also in, in our case, what we do is working, uh, we select based on the CV and experience. So if someone is very, very keen to participate in the summer school, then um, he can apply, he or she can apply, and then we can have a, a informal chat before or evaluate the, 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 the CV and have an informal chat. Uh, um, Sometimes we give some extra read, reads before, reading list before the summer school start. Well, in the previous year, uh, we, I can say that the students were um, very much international, and this is very uh, a nice thing. So um, the students from Milano Bicocca had the experience of sharing the room and sharing the classroom with the students from other countries and see the city in a completely different way. They've been living here, working here, studying here, and then for a week they kind of, kind of becoming again tourists of this city because they have to kind of share, are sharing the experience with other foreign students. Um, when is happening? Um, it happens between the 9th and the 20th of July. Uh, the first week will be in Barcelona and the, no, it's the other way around. The first week in Milan and the second week in Barcelona. Um, and, um, and then we, we keep one, uh, one day for the transfer. Uh, the, the students have to uh, arrange the transfer from Milan to Barcelona. Um, on their own. 
Uh, for accommodation also, this is uh, uh, usually like there is a, also an informal uh, chat after the, 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 um, the evaluation and the admission to the school. So sometimes what, what has happened in the past is that the students from Barcelona and from Milan, the kind of exchange and they coach surfing with each, uh, with each other. So uh, to cut the expenses, uh, students usually invite uh, each other in their house, uh, to share the expenses. So this is also a kind of nice experience. Uh, application will be 15 of May, and the tuition fees change if you are a, a Bicocca student or you are coming from another university. Thank you very much. Questions? Great. <laughs> So we can uh, say hi to the rest of Cinzia Corti, who is leaving us for other uh, appointments. And thank you for, to Professoressa Mugnano for the presentation, and Professor Nuvolati. Uh, now I can give the stage um, to the uh, upcoming summer school program. Uh, Stefano Caldirolo will be doing the presentation. Uh, the summer school is uh, called Learning from the Local Communities and Tribal People in global frames and will take place uh, in India. So good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Stefano Caldirola. Uh, I teach contemporary Asian history at the University of Bergamo. And I'm the president of a cultural association whose name is SOSTE. Uh, we do organize a, a responsible tourism trip uh, in Asia, particularly in, uh, in the Indian subcontinent since uh, 2012. And uh, we already organized some uh, winter school and summer school with the uh, University of Milano Bicocca in the past. I'm here on behalf of uh, Professor Vincenzo Matera of anthropology who cannot be present today because he's, uh, um, uh, he's in Rome now, and he asked me to come here to try to show you uh, something about the program uh, that will be held on uh, September. Uh, we will go to India for the third year in a row. This is actually the third edition of uh, our program. And no, it's okay. From the beginning, it's a, is this okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's it. That's it. Okay, so uh, the, the summer school uh, is articulated into uh, three different parts, um, uh, I mean in two stages. The first one will be some lessons uh, uh, here uh, at the University of Milano Bicocca. Uh, these lessons uh, will introduce the, the program of, uh, of the summer school uh, and it will be um, before the, the summer, so before uh, July. And uh, we will try to touch the points uh, we will already touch when we'll be in India. Uh, so uh, we will, from an um, academic point of view, uh, we will try to uh, explain why uh, this program will be done in India. Uh, learning from the local is the idea uh, of Professor Matera, uh, try to develop uh, uh, some uh, uh, important points in anthropology uh, as well as education science, uh, economics, uh, and sociology, uh, learning from uh, some realities within the Indian society of three different contexts. One is the context of the city of Kolkata, uh, where uh, we will, uh, we already know, uh, we have already some very good links with some uh, uh, um, local uh, realities uh, in this very big town uh, of 16 million of people uh, with a huge diversity uh, within the, the town's border, a lot of problems, a lot of uh, issues, uh, and we will explore the town uh, and we will have some links with some academic institution uh, of, the, of the city. Uh, why India is, uh, uh, has been chosen for this program of uh, learning from local because uh, India is a home of uh, really huge diversity and really huge differences uh, not only from uh, 
social uh, and economic point of view, uh, but also uh, from a religious and uh, uh, ethno-linguistic point of view. So we will try to touch to touch this, uh, all these points. And also because uh, um, from uh, anthropology students, it's very much important to understand the, the role uh, some particular categories of Indian societies have in the 21 centuries in India, like the Adivasis, the tribes. Uh, India is the home of, the, um, of more than 80 millions of the so-called tribals and is the, the home of the, um, the most important tribal, from a numerical point of view, tribal groups in the world. So we will try to find out how these tribal people uh, can uh, relate with other groups in the modern Indian society as well in the traditional villages we will go to visit. So the second part of the, um, of the program will touch the heritage, uh, uh, artistic and uh, cultural heritage of India. Uh, we are now involved with an organization whose name is Banglanato.com uh, whose aim is to uh, try to give the people, especially the most vulnerable sections of Indian societies, uh, uh, such as tribals, as uh, low caste people, women, uh, especially at the village level, a way to uh, improve their economic and, and, and social status through the traditional activities uh, uh, usually these groups do. Uh, we would go to a village, a very small village, uh, whose name is Naya, uh, where the women of the village are involved in the Patachitra heart, which is a way of uh, uh, paint and sing on uh, some scrolls uh, that traditionally were uh, presented during some melas, so the, the typical village fairs. And we will see how this uh, uh, art is changing uh, in a contact with the modern issues as well as the, this form of art is changing the lifestyle of the village. Then we will try another one and um, we will get in touch with another way of development through traditional heritage and art visiting another village in a very remote tribal area of West Bengal. Uh, the area is the Purulia area, westernmost part of the state of West Bengal, inhabited mostly by tribal people. And in this place, the tribals, they used to do the dance mask. Uh, they used the, the, to wear this mask and uh, they uh, dance uh, and they uh, do some kind of theater. Uh, and this way of art was uh, really endangered during the last uh, 20, 30 years. Uh, but now there is a real renaissance of this kind of art uh, uh, with a changing of themes, a changing of, uh, of ways, and also it will be very, very interesting to interact with the tribal people there. Then we will go to the national capital of Delhi, uh, and in Delhi we will have some links uh, with some local institutions like Anthropology Department of the University of Delhi, and we will try to uh, see from an academic point of view uh, all the changes within Indian society with the help of uh, uh, very well known internationally uh, academics from uh, the, one of the most important universities in India. So, uh, uh, who is uh, uh, the student who can uh, join this, uh, this program, the summer school? Of course, the summer school is thinking mostly from the student from uh, an anthropological background. But uh, in the previous editions, we got students from other uh, departments as well and other universities as well. So last year, we got some international students from uh, universities in Germany, in Belgium. Uh, and uh, we hope this year that we'll be, uh, this program will grow even more internationally. Uh, so everything will be done in English, uh, not only because uh, some of the students might come from other uh, states and other backgrounds out of Italy, but also because, of course, English is the language at, at an academic level in India, so everything will be done in English. And uh, also, we hope that uh, the background of the students that will, will join the program will be also really diverse because uh, having students from different departments can give to us some different points of view in developing our, our project. So mostly it's for students of anthropology, but all the students can join. Uh, if, if they are bachelor students, master degree students, there is no any barrier on that. 
uh, we only uh, want students, university students in the program, so outsiders are not allowed to come because we would like to, uh, to give to the program a really strong academic background and aim. So uh, the days are 8 September, 23rd September. Um, we will go in a season that is uh, hopefully will be good in India uh, because we are at the end of the monsoon. So temperatures usually are quite high, but not as high as uh, in the previous months. Uh, last year we were really lucky, so we got no rain at all. Uh, it might be rain, especially in Kolkata. By the way, it's uh, actually uh, a season where uh, all the universities are in the middle of the, uh, their programs, uh, teaching programs, and very close to the exams, because uh, uh, in India, universities usually close in the hot season, that is uh, between May and uh, beginning of July. Um, the application deadline is June 50th. Uh, we ask you to hurry up because it's not easy to organize for such a big group. Uh, usually our groups are between 15 and 20 students. So we got no limit, but uh, we think that uh, the best way is to keep the number uh, on maximum 20 students. And it's not easy to organize, and also because you have to buy your own flight ticket, it's better to hurry up because uh, the flights now are quite cheap, but it can, the, the price can increase a lot uh, closer to the date of the departure. And the tuition fee is uh, 900 euros. Um, we decided to keep this tuition fee of 900 euro even this year, uh, given that India has a very high inflation rate. So it's going to be very, very difficult to uh, keep these expenses because India, uh, from some point of view, is a very cheap country, but from other points of view, is not. Especially in the town, the prices sometimes might be high for accommodation and also uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, involvement of local committees and local NGOs and organizations and we pay some donations to them. So this is another way why uh, the cost is, uh, I mean, the, the budget is very, very strict. But anyway, 900 euros that can be paid in three different uh, uh, moments. Uh, there will be uh, some payment uh, uh, for the university, some payment for a local tour operator that help us to organize the accommodation and transportation. And also, uh, one sum of money will be collected by me at the Calcutta airport when everybody will be there. And it will be useful for uh, the donation, local donation, uh, and for meals, uh, and uh, for the entrance of the monuments we are going to see. And uh, no, that, that's it. So uh, just uh, one, uh, one thing more, and I finish my speech. Um, I, uh, we don't have special requests for the students. We, as, uh, as I told you, uh, we want students from all the different backgrounds. The only thing is that uh, India is not a very easy country to travel in. Uh, we need a spirit of adaptation by the students. Everything might happen. I mean, the, the train might be delayed, the flight might be canceled, uh, we can uh, have some problems. Uh, in, in, but anyway, it's a part of the program. So what we request to the students is to be open to some changes of the program suddenly. We will try to do our best to keep the program intact, but uh, everything might happen. And also a strong spirit of adaptation. So you are going uh, out of Europe, of course, in a... Uh, fast developing country, but still there are a lot of problems, especially in some big towns like Kolkata and Delhi. And also, uh, you don't have to forget that uh, we are going to some remote rural areas. So in these areas, uh, accommodation might be very, very basic. Uh, the roads are very bad, so some, and also it might be rain, so everything might be delayed. So it's a very good experience, and a part of the experience is to try to uh, adapt to all these uh, changes and to a completely different background because yeah, we will go to a part of India, especially West Bengal, which is quite remote and also backward. Uh, so it's not like traveling in Europe. So if you feel yourself ready, uh, please do the application. If you don't feel ready, please don't do that. Otherwise, it will be very, very difficult for you and for us as well. <laughs> So if you have any question, I'm here to answer you. Okay, thank you very much. I 
only one clarification on regarding the tuition fee as this is the first program uh, outgoing that uh, we are presenting. Uh, the tuition fee, it does not include the cost of a travel to and for India, uh, but it covers all the rest of the expenses during your stay. So it's, uh, it's a full board covered for the students who want to join this program. And the reason why we are collecting the money in a different installment is uh, also because the, problem, uh, the program requires to the organization a different, uh, a different uh, procedure of uh, payment to the different uh, attractions and uh, with the partners of the program locally. So, uh, thank you again. Yeah. No, I, I would like to add one thing I forgot. Uh, for the flight, uh, of course, uh, we decided to leave uh, the flight free for two reasons. First is that uh, uh, if you um, enroll now, uh, you can pay the flight less. Now, I saw on the net that there are some flights that might cost around 500 euros. So 500 euros is pretty good. Uh, and the second reason is that uh, somebody usually wants to stay in India more. Possibly some of them, they want to go to see other parts of India as well. Some of them, they want to see Taj Mahal is very close to Delhi, so Rajasthan is very close to Delhi. So there are many places. Uh, you can decide to book the flight to go before or maybe after the, so the, the program you can stay in India. And uh, we can help you in organizing your trip uh, as uh, advisors. Uh, uh, and uh, feel free to contact me at any time uh, in order to organize your trip uh, even after the, or maybe before the program, the official program. Thank you. Thank you again. Grazie. So, so we move up to different location. Uh, so I can invite um, uh, Paola Rebora to give the presentation of a program which is a long-lasting program here at University of Milano Bicocca, Statistic Alps. And uh, welcome. Hello. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Paola Rebora and I'm teaching medical statistics at the School of Medicine and Surgery here in Milano Bicocca. I'm uh, coordinating this uh, summer school uh, course, uh, Statistic Alps, together with professors Maira Grazia Valsecchi and Stefania Galimberti. This is a much more specialistic course uh, on statistics. Statistic Arts is a residential course running every year on different topics uh, on burning methodology, advanced methodology arising in the field of biostatistics. So uh, teacher, international teachers are coming that are usually top level researcher in this field. And this year, Mary Riley from the Karolinska Institute of Sweden and uh, the professor uh, Chun Seng Tan from uh, the National University of Singapore will come uh, to teach about uh, extended regression models for new epidemiologic design and analysis. So, which is uh, the challenge? The challenge is, uh, as many of you know, data are increasingly available uh, uh, together with uh, like um, medical records, especially in epidemiology, in clinical studies, we have an increasing availability of data. But in the same time, genetic and biological biology uh, um, require to, to spend a lot of money for, uh, a lot of money and resources for data because of costly measurement, because of the need of biological specimen in order to measure biomarkers that are the, the base of personalized medicine. So the topic is to learn how to design more efficient uh, designs uh, for epidemiological studies and to better utilize uh, all the data available from well-defined courts such as uh, those available from National Health Register, electronic medical records, and clinical registers or studies. So the participants of the course will be pursued that the analysis that are done uh, usually are not optimized in, uh, in this context, and the use of all available data can uh, improve um, the informativeness of the analysis and can improve the efficiency in this context. 
lecture will be interspaced by tutorial where this method will be implemented in standard software, statistical software. We will have journal club section and workshop in which participants may develop a study design from themselves, so to answer a clinical question. And also they can uh, have the opportunity to implement some methods on their own data in, uh, uh, together with the help of the tutors. Uh, the course will compare con and contrast different uh, uh, efficient sampling strategies and will discuss about which kind of uh, risk measure can be gained from these studies. Uh, in, in, the possibility to reuse nested case control uh, studies will be discussed and also the concept of uh, matching will be extended when the outcome of interest is a continuous variable. Uh, the course will be held in Ponte di Legno that is uh, a nice town in Val Camonica, is surrounded by Italian Alps, and uh, we will have uh, an half-day break in which participants may study with individual studies, so uh, a hiking tour will be also organized. For example, in the picture, uh, we were going from uh, Passo del Tonale up to Passo dei Contrabandieri and going down to another valley that is called Viso Valley. And this a very good opportunity for participants of the studies to discuss statistics in a beautiful surroundings. <laughs> um, so um, the, the, the target audience is a PhD student in public health, in epidemiology and biostatistics, also uh, um, professional in public health are welcome and especially those uh, working in uh, national uh, or regional uh, health uh, agencies. And this is a very good opportunity for uh, students in order to meet professionals from all over the world. In fact, uh, the course is very international. Mm, mm, half of the students are always uh, international, are coming out of Italy and also out of Europe often. And um, it's a good opportunity also to, to increase the network uh, of collaboration. Uh, the course will be held uh, in the second week of September. And the tuition fee, it covers um, uh, all the teaching materials, but also the bus transfer from Bergamo to Ponte di Legno, hotel accommodation, and all the meals during the course. Uh, together with a nice social dinner at uh, the end, uh, very typical social dinner from uh, uh, the mountains. So the tuition is 1,000 euro and 400, uh, 400 euros, and there is a discount for PhD student and for member of uh, statistical and epidemiological uh, societies. Thank you. Thank you, Paola. And... Uh... Hope you will uh, joy, uh, enjoy also this year the program in uh, Ponte di Legno, which is a very lovely place to be. So thank you again. So I guess uh, now we uh, have a um, um, few more summer schools to be presented. And uh, if my mouse starts working, I will be uh, giving you a presentation of uh, the program we organize uh, uh, in uh, China this year. It's, uh, it's a program that was uh, um, also uh, before, before uh, in the previous year, was organized by University of Milano Bicocca in cooperation with University of Chongqing. Um, um, then uh, in, the, in, the last, uh, in the last few years we hosted students from Chongqing University here at uh, Milano Bicocca and so this year uh, thanks to the support of uh, the Department of Sociology and Professoressa Patrizia Farina we were able to organize an outgoing summer school as well. Okay, uh, we start with the challenge 
and uh, the challenge we believe we want to address to the students who would like to enroll to this program is to start to understand and discover a little bit more uh, the diversity of Chinese words. We decided to use the, the word words in plural uh, as uh, representing the fact that often we think about China as a monolith, as a single block country, very big, somewhere in the Far East, and uh, such as India, are countries that come up with uh, so many times on the news and uh, on the, uh, for economical reason, for grow reason, for for, for, for many reasons, for political reasons, but then uh, it's difficult for us as our Europeans in time to understand um, the diversity which is behind uh, such huge countries. So uh, even if China remains an economy and the largest uh, contributor to world, uh, to world growth in GDPs, the, the, the growth of China still becomes extremely Still, is still very, very, very big every year. Uh, still, there are um, several aspects that uh, are um, not considered within these growth rate numbers and these economical figures that we uh, that we, we listen about China. So, what we would like to do and uh, is to get a taste of some uh, Chinese characteristics. Uh, on culture, Chinese culture and mix them within, uh, uh, with lessons and presentation and activities and visits during uh, your period of stay in, uh, in Chongqing University. So uh, we, we are being, coming up with some uh, uh, interesting uh, topics that we want to highlight through the support of uh, um, Chinese professors at Chongqing universities, uh, experts from the cities, and uh, moreover, uh, with the support of a professor from University of Milano Bicocca that will join the group uh, as tutor and then visiting professor. Um, what we will do, uh, uh, moreover, uh, than uh, stay in class is to um, do uh, some visit in some sites of interest, uh, both in Chongqing, which is a uh, which is a city that has a lot to, to show, and in Chengdu, which, uh, where there is a, uh, a panda bear reserve, so with, uh, it's, a, it's a very popular uh, touristic attraction for European and Chinese uh, as well, that they go and visit. So uh, those are the list of the topics that uh, we came up and that we want to strengthen during the during the summer school program. So we will discuss about food, uh, which is a key uh, aspect of Chinese culture. Uh, we will discuss about calligraphy, uh, which is not only the, the fact of writing, but it's actually as a, an all own, uh, uh, as you say, way to be done. Uh, I'm sorry there is not uh, any sinologist here that can <laughs> give you some better inside. I, I, my Chinese uh, it's uh, stopped in uh, Ni Hao and Ni Shen Ti Hao Ma and I doubt I would be able to write it somehow. But you will learn how to do that during if you join the summer school. Um, so we will discuss about economy, but uh, uh, trying to trying to uh, focus on this uh, multifaceted aspect. So the fact that there is a growing GDP, but uh, there are a big blocks of Chinese society that uh, can be still considered left behind. Um, there are uh, issues about internal migration in China that will be addressed both during the summer school and to, during some preliminary lessons by the professor of University Milano Bicocca who work on these topics. Um, then we will discuss about the traditional medicine in China, uh, the roots, the, how diverse is from our medicine and uh, how can it be in somehow uh, combined or uh, uh, surely uh, very interesting topics. Um, also, we will discuss a little bit about the modernity of China, so contemporary China. We will do it in um, talking about Chinese literature and also talking about media and communication. So, Sina Weibo, it's a social network 
uh, extremely popular in China, and uh, um, also we will discuss about Chinese contemporary literature. Um, we will explain Guangxi, uh, Tai Chi Yuan, which is Tai Chi, okay? <laughs> Guangxi is a, does anybody know what is Guangxi? Well, I try to explain it, it's very difficult for me as I'm not an expert, but uh, Guangxi is somehow the network connection and relationship that a Chinese person, in order to do business, grow during his period of life. Um, this network starts from the schools, uh, so you bond with your peers, you bond with the professors and continues through work. So you connect with uh, your workmate, with your employees. Um, but as some uh, um, standards that needs to be matched. So uh, even uh, giving a present for a Chinese person is different from how we would do it. If you are giving a present to a friend, you will give a certain kind of present that you will never give to a person who has done your studies with you, or a person who works with you, or your boss. And, um, and this all end up to uh, make a complex nature of uh, uh, routine and uh, of um, a way of uh, doing uh, uh, business and living that uh, can be synthesized in this word, which is Guangxi, which uh, mm, I, uh, it's very different from uh, uh, our way to interact uh, uh, on a social and on a business point of view. So it's very interesting to be to be discovered. Tai Chi is a little bit more well known. Uh, we will do a practice lessons uh, uh, with a Tai Chi uh, teacher. And uh, then, uh, of course, uh, University of Chongqing is very um, is very is very famous for his architecture uh, department. So we will discuss about uh, urban planning and innovative uh, architectural solution. Uh, of the China uh, is, I mean, not difficult to to say one of the city, one of the country where um, architects join, uh, love to go and work because uh, everything seems be possible seems possible right now. Uh, huge investment and huge. Uh, uh, um, willing to create, um, I believe that this uh, is a big shift for um, Eurocentric point of uh, view of the of the world. The uh, thinking that the the actually big changes and big improvement in um, in uh, uh, in the cities are not happening in Europe anymore. They are happening somewhere else. China is a big part of it. Uh, then uh, we will discuss about uh, Taoism, Confucianism, and uh, moreover. We will do this in Chongqing. These are just a few pictures. Chongqing is a, is a city of uh, rather many millions of people. I don't know how many, but a lot. I would say more than 15, 20, 22. It keeps growing in any case. And uh, it's uh, kept between two rivers. So it's a river city. And uh, if you make me just go back, this is a quite nice picture. It shows the skyscrapers on the back, and uh, uh, this is the old neighbors, almost, almost, uh, how do you say, almost uh, uh, squeezed between the river and, uh, and the city which is behind. But it's still there, and uh, we would like to discuss why, we, together with you, why it is still there, even if the rest of the city keeps growing and growing. Um, who can participate to the summer school program? Um, the summer school is aimed for international students uh, who desire, desire to discover China. And uh, as my also the previous speakers uh, have uh, stressed uh, with uh, their presentation, we do encourage the applicants from uh, students from all departments and disciplines. Uh, because those experiences are few, uh, are some of the few experiences that university can provide you to um, to address a team and to do a, to, to be part of a program together with um, uh, students who are not from your background, and that's a really enriching experience uh, uh, by it, it, its own. Um, 
when do we go? We will go in September, which is, should be one of the best period to, to visit Chongqing for temperature and uh, the application will close uh, in June, but I do suggest to start making uh, requests and, uh, and the application before and spread the news among your, your students, your, your friends also, because there is a limit, a minimum number of students that we need to be reaching in order to make this experience uh, possible for all the, the students who want to join. Uh, the tuition fee uh, it uh, includes accommodation, some of the meals at Shanxi University, course material and activities, and uh, it will be uh, 900 euro. So I finished the presentation. So if you have some questions, I will be able to answer them after the other presentation. I will be staying here in any case. So now, who is next? I invite uh, good friends of mine, Professor Acciari, Paolo, Dinara, and whoever else wants to come to introduce us to one of the most historical summer school program uh, in the University of Milano Bicocca, which is the Green Energy Management Summer School. So welcome to all of you. No more than two. Okay. Uh, good evening. Thanks to be here. I'm Maurizio Ciarri. I'm a physics from, a uni from material science department. And uh, I am involved in this uh, GM school uh, since, uh, since the beginning. Now we are in the sixth edition. And um, this uh, is a school uh, dedicated sorry <laughs> uh, dedicated to renewable energy. But uh, uh, renewable energy is, is uh, have a look uh, and a huge view of the of the problem because we we different uh, teacher. I am an organizer, but so teacher in the school uh, together with other uh, colleagues. Uh, which are uh, which came from different uh, uh, area, from uh, economic area, from uh, statistics area, um, physics. I, I, I am, and so um, just because we, our idea idea is to share together our, our experiences in the, in the field of uh, energy and the sustainable energy. It means that we have to take care of different aspects within energy. It means that you have to know, obviously, something about the techniques you have in order to produce energy, renewable energy, but then you have to understand if it's a sustainable debt, if sustainable from a different point of view, from point of view of uh, materials, for example, you need uh, a lot of uh, silicon, just an example, to, to produce uh, all the photovoltaic modules now um, in the world are required. Or, but you, you have also to, to, to have a plane in order to understand if you co the cost of this uh, energy production is, is sustainable, is competitive with the other uh, source. And uh, then you have to, to, um, to speak about uh, the um, um, accepted by, by the, the people where you, you intend uh, to, to, to put some producer. Uh, just an example, you know, people say, okay, it's very good, but not in my back, not, not in my garden, because uh, if it's clean, I prefer some other part. So we try to put together all these uh, experience and uh, speak, for example, this year, we have also some, some uh, after I go back on this, but uh, some uh, analysis uh, of um, water management, very important, for example. And so uh, different topics uh, are uh, um, analyzed by scientists, but also by people which work 
in the um, industry uh, and so on. So you have the opportunity to see different aspects. This year uh, we will have uh, the school in Italy just also because uh, we had uh, uh, the, the past, and I grew up and <laughs> don't, with the, don't worry, but just to uh, He's from professor from physics, so, so uh, we, we I'm have quite to, sure. <laughs> obviously to go up and down. But um, and here uh, we have some uh, student, past student of the school, uh, just to, because we start also a collaboration, for example, with the uh, colleague which work in, uh, which live in Kazakhstan. And so from, uh, we start also be before, but we, we develop also a project, we start a project, a bilateral project with, uh, for a change of student and professor between the two university, all, always in the field of uh, sustainable energy. And uh, so for this year, Last year we were in Astana, Astana, in Kazakhstan, and uh, this year we are in Italy. But the, the year before we were, uh, for example, Erice, it was in Erice. So, just to, to say, we go around in the world uh, facing uh, the problem that uh, we, we have in some region, for example, in Kazakhstan. But this year, we, we are in Italy, we are uh, in Milan, but really part will be in Milan and part will be in, in uh, Biella. It's reported where we are. No, the, the place is uh, it's not reported, it's Villa. No, no, the, the name is... It's uh, the Fondazione Pistoletto in Biella. Pistoletto. It's a city of art. It's a very nice uh, location that uh, the second part of the program will be had. Right, and um, so uh, you, uh, you, you can find different uh, uh, news about uh, the, the school uh, on the website, but what I, I would like to stress uh, really that uh, here, for example, is reported circular economy, okay, is uh, uh, used a lot, uh, but really we have uh, an idea to, 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 to have, uh, to face all the problem which are around uh, the energy and sustainable energy. And so we have different uh, uh, experts which work uh, on this. Are two weeks, uh, all right? And um, during which you will have also some moment where a student can uh, face each other and uh, develop some idea. Last year, for, for example, uh, no, in, not with them, but because we were in the winter, School because we have also we had for the next year I don't know <laughs> we had also a winter school uh, and in that case uh, the students were organized in small groups where uh, they can develop uh, some idea how to for example use uh, some specific uh, um, energy source just an idea so different aspect not not only from the technical point but uh, all the different points which are involved so I just to think for me I think I speak a lot. And would like to invite um, the guy to, es yes. <laughs> to explain uh, the experience in this uh, different year. So we will receive some. We have here two students who survived the previous program. So they are here to testify that uh, we are not doing anything bad to the students who enrolled to summer school, actually. Uh, so I thank Dinar and Paolo that. Uh, uh, as I to yeah, came here, and uh, so I just uh, believe that maybe uh, you can uh, tell a little bit more about uh, how was your experience within the programs in your edition, and uh, please. Buon pomeriggio, caro signore e signore. Mi chiamo Dinara, I'm a PhD student under the program Erasmus Plus uh, in University Milano di Coca. And as it was mentioned previously, I was a participant of summer school, Green Energy Summer School in Astana last year. And as Professor Maurizio already mentioned all the topics that will be covered this year, and I just want to say that last year it was a very, I don't know, a very context sensitive first class trainings brought by professors, professionals, and all these people who participated, and people from industry. 
So it's very interesting um, experience that I had, uh, not only academic, but also the um, the field people who are coming to the, uh, our seminars also. And this year, as um, we, uh, we discovered, it will be a, an international one-day conference that any uh, students like me, for example, I'm a PhD student, we are obliged to do some publications. And we, students who participate in this summer school will have opportunity to publish their papers in the publications of uh, this summer school international conference. And I'll give the floor to Paolo. Um, he will tell more, I think, uh, as a coming. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yeah, OK. Uh, thank you to be here. I am Paolo. I am uh, actually a PhD student in uh, statistics and mathematical finance uh, here in U7. Uh, um, I participated to two editions of uh, GEM, the third and the fourth. Uh, the third in uh, Erice in Sicily. Uh, it was in 2016 and the last one in Astana, Astana in, uh, in Kazakhstan uh, last year in September. Uh, GEM, uh, it was for me a very important uh, appointment with the life because uh, the first time I had the opportunity uh, to introduce myself to the world of research and academic. Uh, I know a lot of uh, teachers and uh, other students who uh, they um, uh, say their experience and their project. Uh, and I know uh, a teacher there who will be, uh, in some month, he will be began the, uh, my co tutorship for the master thesis. Uh, in September, in uh, the July of last year, I spent two months uh, to, to write the second part of my thesis with him, and we report uh, our result during the last summer school. And so it was a very important uh, thing and opportunity to, to grow. Uh, the topics covered by GEM are huge. Huge is the uh, real <laughs> word, because energy is a field which don't have a unique field. It can be applied to economics, to physics, to mathematics, to each kind of topic and research area you can imagine. Energy uh, is connected. Uh, so uh, what they presented is uh, only a little part of uh, the large world of uh, energy. And uh, energy and environment, okay. M my work was uh, about environment, so not each teacher is specialized in energy, but for example, Joao, my tutor from uh, Portugal, uh, we were uh, working on uh, environmental and uh, sustainability uh, of um, our uh, economies. Uh, about the uh, last experience in Kazakhstan, it was a uh, Another uh, uh, very important uh, event because we met a uh, very different uh, culture uh, and we found uh, a lot of bridges. And uh, probably it, this is what uh, excited me because uh, uh, firstly, the first thing we think was, uh, okay, we are um, European, we are and we, are, we have a kind of culture. They are Asian or Eurasian people, so they have different culture. No, uh, we uh, discover that mm, there are a lot of uh, bridges, a lot of things that connect these two worlds. And uh, so I, I'm very glad uh, that Dinara is here. She spent a lot of time with us uh, to guide, to show the city, to explain what, uh, what does it mean uh, leaving Kazakhstan. And uh, this is a, it was a very experience. I, I invite you to apply and to, uh, to do <laughs> something better than us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Paolo. Yes, I believe that the, um, 
one of the most important thing that uh, it can be stressed about those summer program are uh, related to the engagement that the student has on these topics uh, are uh, more uh, um, uh, balanced uh, between also the relationship between the lecturers and students compared to uh, everyday class experience. Uh, it's a small group of international students. You spend most of the time with the, with the students, with the professors, and, uh, and that allows you to interact uh, um, in a very interesting way. Uh, the program is uh, in uh, July, uh, second and third week, in Milano and Biella, the deadline is in May, and the cost for the school is 500 euro. So I thank you, the GEM uh, team. I ask Dinara to stay because I have only one left summer school to present, is uh, the one in, uh, in uh, her uh, home country. So uh, I want her with me here on the stage to tell me a little bit more about the hosting university. Thank Paolo, thanks uh, Professor Acciari. So, thank you for being so patient and uh, following all the topics, even if maybe you're interested in only some of the programs, but we decided to keep the presentation short, but to give you a, um, a full view of the program that we are offering this year, because maybe you can come back and tell something to friend of yours or uh, colleagues that follow our courses. So the last program we are presenting today, it's a uh, program on uh, Smart City. The, the title is Smart City Looks Like, and it's a very nice title because I thought about it. And um, it will be held in Astana. Uh, Astana is uh, the capital of Kazakhstan. And uh, then we will ask Dinara to tell us a little bit more about the partner university, which is the university she comes from, and the city itself. So, global challenge. Your challenge is building the cities of the future. Uh, that uh, uh, it sounds a little bit too enthusiastic, written uh, only like this. But in fact, when we talk about smart cities, we talk about topics that are um, all connected to each other and uh, involves the work of different professionals uh, across different disciplines and different uh, area of interests. And so uh, the final topic is actually to uh, create uh, a better uh, urban environment that uh, are able to be smart and uh, able to um, anticipate and solve the problems that older cities uh, have. So we will try to do it how we will uh, understand and discuss the challenges that uh, urban contexts have nowadays. We will try to learn methods and uh, tools and solutions to face those challenges. And uh, we will do that uh, through an interdisciplinary approach because uh, we will discuss about uh, urban planning, mobility, sustainability, but also we will discuss about data, uh, the, um, program is promoted by the Department of Informatics, so we will discuss about uh, data and analytics, security and infrastructures as well. Um, the lectures will be combined with study visit in important uh, spots of Astana in order to make the experience even more enjoyable. Um, I will uh, just ask you to look at the slide on uh, what uh, we will do because we have then um, on the website, uh, a, broad, uh, a draft program already available. So uh, uh, it, uh, the program is divided in three main aspects. One is trying to setting up the problem. So we'll discuss about data. Then we will discuss about what are the technologies that will be used, and then the domains: so mobility, sustainability, and smart city planning. Uh, we will do it in uh, Astana, and so I just ask to Dinara to do a little promotion of the city, just saying what are the few main, no, the many reasons why <laughs> Astana is a very interesting destination for a summer school. Um, regarding Astana, Astana is a very young, um, the youngest capital in the world that grows so fast. Um, it's very big uh, for now. It's growing every day. 
even sometimes I when I don't walk in this street and then I come back after two or three weeks and I, and I there is a new building appearing so it's something growing crazy and really fast um, the population um, of Astana is um, about one million people uh, last year we hosted Expo um, which um, the participants of JAM also were lucky to participate in some seminars and conferences held in the Expo. Um, about, about from my university, I'm, I'm studying my PhD in uh, innovation management in university in Astana. It's Eurasian National University. It has more than um, 14 faculties and uh, more departments. Uh, we have 24 nine, scientists scientific uh, research institutes under this university. It's about, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 15,000 students study in this university. Um, it's public, it's national. We have classes in English, Kazakh, and Russian. Um, and this year, we are lucky. We are hosting a jam, um, a smart cities uh, summer school in Astana. And um, I, I, I welcome you all. and. Uh, I encourage you to apply and to experience this fascinating city and very diverse, which never sleeps. <laughs> yeah. And welcome to Astana and Kazakhstan. Okay, thank you. So just the last two slides of the day, I'm sure you're happy. The, um, the target of the school, uh, we do appreciate applicants from uh, all levels. I'll throw uh, students from uh, a master and PhD program for information and communication technology are, um, are particularly encouraged to apply as uh, the core of the of the summer school on the smart cities will uh, uh, will uh, will be on these topics. When will you go in Astana? We will go in uh, July. Uh, we have a first wave of application for. Uh, international student that will expire the 18th of March. Then we will have a second wave of application that will expire in April. Um, but maybe we will need to increase a little bit the tuition fee for the second wave. So if you apply to the first wave, you have, may find a discounted price. The cost of the program is 480 euro and includes accommodation, some of the lounges and coffee breaks in Astana, and it does not include the flights as for the other programs in India and China that we presented before. Um, prices in Astana are uh, quite cheap compared to the one uh, uh, that we have here. Not uh, too cheap, but uh, cheaper than Milan, and the temperature are enjoyable. That is not what we can say about Astana during the winter time, because the, when I was discussing with the program with my colleagues in the Kazakh University, they were talking to me, talking to me about some snow blizzard and uh, below 50 degrees temperature during the winter time. So we skipped the idea of a winter school in Astana, and we moved forward for presenting a summer school program. If you have any question about the overall presentation, I will be available to answer you uh, after we close up the streaming. I just want to remind you that all the information about the program are available on the summerschoolbicocca.com website. The application it can be done online, and uh, you can write to summerschool at unimib.com uh, for any further request of information. Thank you very much to all of you.